Babies. All of them babies. All right, guys. Now for today's video, we've got a movie that I've wanted to talk about for literally years. So in the 1990s, giant animal attack movies were all the rage. I've already had fun talking about a ton of these movies I grew up with back in the day. And 1999 in particular was a huge year for those types of films. But this one happens to be one that was not only inspired by the then current heavy hitters of Jurassic Park and the Lost World, but it was actually competing with the second Jurassic movie at the box office. The first big budget Hollywood movie about a giant snake with a star studded cast got a lot of people talking when it first came out and it's still recognized to this day as being a pretty cheesy but still really fun adventure movie in its own right. Anaconda is a 1997 suspense adventure movie directed by Luis Luova. It stars Jennifer Lopez, Ice Cube, Eric Stoltz, and John Voight in a little expedition to locate a lost tribe called the People of the Mist. On their journey, they encounter mysterious snake hunter Paul Cerrone, who quickly takes charge of the narrative and steers our cast into danger in order to catch a 40-foot snake. So young, I guess so lethal. One of the things I love the most about this movie is just how insanely absurd it is on nearly every level. Anaconda starts off kind of ordinary. You know, you just got a couple of guys out there on the water trying to make a documentary. And then all of a sudden, some whacked out crazy dude joins the group and starts turning the expedition into a cartoon. I'm about to throw both of y'all son of a bitches in the river myself. <laughs> Snake Hunter Cerrone has this kind of hilarious character about him that comes off as dangerous, creepy, but at the same time, he's formidable. Like, you never know what he's gonna do next. He could help you out by shooting a wild boar chasing you down in the woods one minute and then throw monkey blood on you the next. There's this early moment where Jennifer Lopez is just hanging out, messing with her hair or something, and you see John Voight just staring at her like a crazy person in lust, and I don't know, man, that stuff just makes me laugh every time. Jennifer Lopez, by the way, is the star in what was originally a role that was auditioned for by a lot of different people, including Kim Basinger, Kate Beckinsale, and Nicole Kidman, believe it or not. Gillian Anderson, Scully from The X-Files, was also considered, no doubt, because of how popular she had become from that show back in the day. And believe it or not, she even auditioned for the role of Denise in the movie, which ultimately went to Carrie Wurr, you know, Owen Wilson's girlfriend, who actually does a pretty good job here, despite the fact that she kind of has to deal with John Voight attacking her in some pretty ridiculous scenes. Amen. None in the Bible feel the spirit of sound. Westridge, how dare you? The snakes are what we're all really here for, though, and we happen to get a lot of them. The main anaconda is portrayed by massive green and black creatures, the first of which is what we see for most of the movie. It's the green one that's kind of, you know, following them along the river, and then you get the other one, which is the final boss anaconda. It's this massive titanoboa creature that lives in an engine-looking outpost on the water. These giant snakes in the movie were created through a combination of cutting-edge CGI and animatronic effects. The same stuff they used to make Jurassic Park. Although to be honest with you, Jurassic Park and the Lost World have kind of aged way more gracefully in comparison to Anaconda. But then again, this is kind of the MTV version of Jurassic Park anyways. So yeah, it's not really expected to be as groundbreaking either. Look, I know I usually compare these 90s monster movies to Jurassic Park more often than not in my retrospectives on them, but you guys gotta understand that at the time in which these films were coming out, they really were compared to that dinosaur movie upon release. I don't personally know if the filmmakers were aware of the fact that their movie had a waterfall scene similar to The Lost World or even a character that was hellbent on taking down a giant monster like Roland Timbo. In fact, it would probably be more accurate to say that they were taking inspiration from Steven Spielberg Spielberg's first Jaws. Even the poster of Anaconda says that. But back in the day, come on, man, you were not going to have somebody walk out of the theater and not think about Jurassic Park after watching Anaconda, or Lake Placid, or Deep Blue Sea, or even Godzilla from 1998. This was one of the first movies to have that extensive usage of CGI and animatronics blended together for a reptilian creature. I mean, reptile in Mortal Kombat. What do you think they based his look off of? And look, believe it or not, people could couldn't get enough of that stuff at the time. We all loved CGI back then, and if I'm wrong about Anaconda being made to kind of 
dive into that whole craze. You know, big animal attack plot in the jungle, cutting edge special effects and thrills. Well, look, I'll take the L and say that I was wrong, but hey man, that was definitely the reason I watched the movie as a kid. Still, for what it's worth, the movie comes complete with a ton of memorable scenes that may not exactly be what you'd consider to be, you know, incredible or even that well made, but the movie does have a bit of its own campy charm that I would recommend to someone just trying to have a good time. There's moments where the anacondas attack people and the camera, like, spins around them like, whoa, look, it's like wrapping around them, man. <laughs> it's kind of fun that way. Now look, I'm gonna be totally honest with you guys. Anaconda is an acquired taste. If you only watch movies that are worthy of winning Academy Awards or impressing your friends at work, you're probably not going to have the best time with this. However, if you're a normal person, you may just enjoy yourself. We follow J-Lo, who is desperate to make a name for herself and spend some much needed time alone with Eric Stoltz's character, who she's not only missed for a very long time, but she's got some obvious feelings for, so they like each other. When the mission to document the natives goes haywire and John Voight shows up, man, I gotta tell you, he, he, John Voight really does give this movie such a level of liveliness and energy that, as far as I'm concerned, you can't not have a good time with it. How you like I presume to throw you in the river? You like that presume? Released a mere one month before The Lost World, Anaconda grossed a total of $136.8 million on a $45 million budget and is the proud winner of the Stinkers Award or something like that for worst fake accent and worst villain for John Voight's Paul Cerrone who had such a good time with the movie, he decided to keep the fake monkey prop that gets killed in the film for himself as a little trophy of sorts. Waiting for tonight. I remember reading a review of The Lost World Jurassic Park at one point in time where somebody commented on the quality of the movie by saying, this film's primary competition is Anaconda, so I don't really understand why it's not getting better reviews when they're both comparable in a pretty noteworthy way. <laughs> As for the movie Anaconda itself though, despite bad reviews, the film would manage to have a pretty good laugh with a ton of sequels coming out in the years to come on the Sci-Fi Channel, sadly, before eventually doing a crossover with Lake Placid, believe it or not. In the wild, there can be only one predator at the top of the food chain. And honestly, because of Jennifer Lopez and Ice Cube, the two actors I immediately think of when this movie gets brought up, musicians in a wild campy adventure movie about a freaking giant snake. I mean, like, they really did make this movie what it is. Anaconda, you know, because of all of that, it's garnered a cult following. And yeah, I'd say it deserves it. You see, this was one of the first movies to come out after Jurassic Park that was boasting proudly about how it was following in that movie's footsteps with the CGI and the animatronics and the reptilian creatures. Ironically, it was going head to head with JP2, but The Lost World, look man, that movie took zero prisoners during its run in theaters back in the day, crushing everything that year at the box office, except for a little movie called Titanic. So yeah, Anaconda was kind of a big deal upon release for monster movie fans, and while it certainly wasn't of the same caliber as Jurassic Park 2, it's nowhere near as good as The Lost World, it was still cut from the same kind of, you know, monster movie cloth that people used to eat up back in the day. I can remember a simpler time where movies like Mortal Kombat, Backdraft, and Anaconda would be up on stuff like TNT in the late 90s. These were the kinds of movies that everybody, you know, would have fun with. And while Anaconda is certainly never going to win any Oscars, it didn't have to with how absurdly fun it ended up being. In order to cut costs, there's even part where they, no joke, reverse the footage of the boat pulling away from a waterfall during a point in the movie, and yes, that means you can see the water literally going up. <laughs> At the end of the day, I don't really think a lot of people will complain about Anaconda. It is the premier giant snake movie of the 90s. Several followed in its wake, and again, this was the type of movie that was literally greenlit because big, giant, monstrous, dinosaur, creature, reptilian things were all over the place, and a lot of people were eating that stuff up. So throw in big names like Jennifer Lopez, Ice Cube, John Voight, and you've got this very camp 
campy adventure film that did have some pretty cool cutting edge special effects and, you know, went for the whole jungle adventure feel. <laughs> yeah, Anaconda's crazy, man. Anyways, guys, those are all just my own thoughts and opinions on the subject matter. What do you think of the movie? Have you seen it? And what are your thoughts on the era in which it came out, its reputation it currently has with monster movie fans, and, you know, everything else in general? It's not exactly loved, but I gotta be honest with you, I've seen way worse. This is not a great film, but it's a very, very fun one. And I would definitely recommend, you know, people sitting around and having a good time watching it. So whatever your own thoughts and opinions on this 1997 cult film happen to be, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below. Waiting for tonight.